What does Little Nightmares hide off camera from the player in the guest area and the ladies' quarters? In Little Nightmares, the player must survive navigating throughout this eerie vessel, as we encounter these deadly creatures that want nothing more than to eat or kill us. This is a vast and overall dark game. So, as you may have guessed, there's quite a lot hidden off camera and out of bounds in the game. So I hope you enjoy this breakdown as we wrap things up with Little Nightmares 1 and show off some hidden findings in the game's ending. So I usually like to do a quick recap so that everyone remembers the game as much as they can, but for this game, I'm more so explaining it as we go. So we'll be going through this entire guest section, which involves evading the clutches of these very hungry guests. Following this, we'll tackle the end sequence where we encounter the lady, who isn't too pleased with our existence. We'll also be taking a closer look at the chapter select screen. So without any further delay, let's jump into it. We start off this section by running down this giant pipe, as we can hear seagulls in the distance. You then see in the background a bridge that leads to a very bright opening. After Six climbs this ladder, she finds herself outside this gigantic water vessel. It's quite the sight. I've always enjoyed the scenery during this portion of the game. However, there's a boat in the background that is unloading an endless amount of very large individuals. So if we stop here and take a closer look, you'll see that these guests, as they're called, are generating from within this boat. This appears to be just an endless conga line of very hungry guests. Something else to note about these big baddies is that you'll see that there are only so many of them that you'll encounter before noticing duplicates. Some wear masks, whereas others just appear to be old and homely. It is interesting to wonder what their lives are like outside the game's story. Is this just the ultimate buffet vacation? Food for thought? Anyways, panning out, you can see the water goes fairly far, making for a giant body of water. Looking behind the maw shows a layout of our previous endeavors, but bringing Six over to these guests does not phase them, as they continue on their merry way. No matter what I tried, they paid no mind to me. With the normally not being able to come over here, their disregard makes sense. So I decided to walk down towards their ship from where they were unloading. I was surprised to see that there was collision that allowed me to walk all the way down to this ship. However, right as I made my entry, I found myself falling to my everlasting doom. After escaping this endless fall, I tried to see if I could follow the guest into the maw. Unfortunately, due to the level unloading based on my camera angle, I was unable to explore this the way I wanted. Let's move on to the next section though. In here, we find ourselves much closer to these starving beasts. Immediately going off camera reveals the guests generating as they go up these stairs, similar to how they unloaded from the vessel. During this part, we're normally tasked with finding our way into the next area the guests are going to. The lady can be seen observing her customers as we progress. I decide to join her on this balcony and, uh, try to hide under her kimono. I traveled up to this hollow shell of a lady and found myself in her head. The view in here is, well, definitely strange. At one point, I felt like I was playing as a lady as I watched my guests make their way in. Going down to the guests in person shows that they still pay no mind to our presence. I'm even able to walk into the next area with them, where we normally find ourselves jumping across light fixtures. The guests split their path in this room, where we can find them simply disappearing, shortly after leaving the view of normal gameplay. In this next room, we'll see the silhouette of a couple guests in the background. So I took a peek back here and found lower poly versions of the guests that were floating as they scarfed down gulps of air. It should be noted that a lot of the background feasting will be going on throughout this section of the game. Moving on though, we encounter our first aggressive guest, as he throws a table and charges at us. If you haven't guessed already, they eat you if they catch you. So I wanted to see what this looks like up close. We can see Six does a quick movement into the guest, but then just helplessly floats within the belly of the beast. However, evading this baddie is fairly simple, and we can move on. We avoid another guest as we climb these plates and swing over her. It's pretty fun to look back at her after clearing this part, as she still tries her hardest to reach for Six. This next room doesn't really have anything going on off screen, although I put the camera on some of these guests' heads to observe their endless eating animations. It's fair to say the guests are bottomless pits with their nightmarish appetites. After narrowly evading the guests, we run by one that initiates a chase, forcing us to leap to a light fixture and swing to safety. I went to look back at this fella and found another guest behind him and was, well, you'll just have to use your imagination for this one. Looking down shows a previous room we were in before and reveals that this poor lady is still trying to reach for us. Like, just eat your food, Tina. This next room is a rather large dining hall where you can see many of the guests chowing down. Normally, you're met by this handsome fella and get chased back from where you came from. We then hop over the doofus and run for our lives as we slide to safety. But instead, I join the feast. They once again do not mind my presence. You'll notice I'm able to clip right through them. 
I jumped down and ran towards the back in an effort to go up these stairs. As you can see, Six just clipped right through them as well, leaving me with not much else to do back here. Moving forward, we end up getting chased by one of the chefs into a bathroom. Successfully hiding causes the chef to retreat and lock us in. I then followed him off camera only to find him stop right in front of the elevator. He'll stand there in a puzzled state until we progress, which involves breaking this mirror and climbing up and out of the bathroom. When doing this, the chef will blink into this background room. Normally, we only ever see a silhouette, but going in here shows the chef chopping, well, almost chopping what appears to be ham. Coming here with six feels unsettling, but luckily no danger is presented by the chef as he continues chopping away. Imagine if you were to sneak up behind him and light him on fire. I know, this thought process concerns me too. Moving on though, we go down the elevator, which takes us to the next horrifying chase sequence. Six needs to run through this section without stopping as guests start pouring out of the back rooms and give chase. It truly was panic inducing when playing this part of the game for the first time. However, looking back here at the guests before they chase us makes for a funny sight. They lie all over each other as they wait for the player to activate them. While looking around, I noticed one of the guests above the map just hanging out by herself. I wasn't sure why she was here, but once I began the chase sequence, I realized that this guest's purpose is to drop down and block any chance of going back. So moving forward, as you can see, I tried doing this chase while still off camera. I managed to navigate through it successfully and eventually made it to safety. Going back and looking at the guests after they failed is funny, as they clipped through one another and tried to form a guest centipede. Sorry. Anyways, now to my least favorite part. This is where Six starts having hunger pains once again. We find a gnome that appears to be kindly offering some food to us. If you're not new to the game, then you'll know that Six decides that the gnome is on the menu and not its gift, as she devours the gnome. Despite the sadness this scene brings us, Dark Six appears to be pleased. Moving on follows with the lady who is taking the elevator. I rushed over to see if she actually goes anywhere, only to see that she simply disappears. After taking the elevator, we progress to the lady's personal quarters. At the start, there's nothing really going on off camera. Normally, Six has to go upstairs and sneak past the lady to progress. She indefinitely stands here until you move on to the next room as she awaits her cue, which involves us, the player, knocking this face over. After doing this, we can see that she vanished, which is exactly what her model does if we watch off camera. Taking the key to the locked door is uneventful, along with the following chase sequence we have with the lady. It's quite the horrific chase, but again, as you can see, nothing is happening outside of what we normally would see. This next part is where we find ourselves in this large room, where we end up having a showdown with the lady. Normally, we grab this mirror from the next room over, and we come back to find the lady patiently waiting for us. She poofs into thin air, and then we're supposed to defend ourselves with this mirror as she continuously tries to grab six. Before doing this, I went out of bounds and saw that there's more to this room than the player would realize. Above it, you can see an unloaded room with text that says, Debug Teleport to End. So I decided to bring Six up to this room and discovered that it's the same exact room. It appears this room is used for when the lady is defeated, whereas the other room is for the entire fight sequence. Without going out of bounds, the player would never realize that this room is a duplicate for when the lady falls to six, making it interesting on how this transition takes place. Moving forward, when the player gets near the mirror at the start, that's when the lady appears in the large room. I very quickly realized that there's no way I could defeat her with the game view I was currently using, as you cannot see the spotlight that you need to be in for safety. Taking a closer look at when she kills six shows how much contortion she puts six through. I couldn't help but notice that the lady was having a bit of a stiff neck situation herself as she destroyed Six. I did get lucky in one instance and guessed where the light was a few times, but in the end I had to change the view back. This fight doesn't really hide much from the player, but I did have fun fighting her as I used different camera angles while doing so. She nearly gets me on one of her attempts, but the light saves me right at the last second. I always enjoyed this fight sequence, which like most of the game keeps you on your toes. However, after fending her off a few times, we finally hit her with the almost final blow, breaking the mirror in the process. Dark Six is of course standing by as we approach the helpless lady. Her mask was blasted off a few moments ago, and as you can see, she looks terrified. Safe to say, she didn't see this sequence of events ever happening, which includes a child draining the life out of her. So after this intense killing by Six, we are loaded into the last section, which involves Six walking down this huge dining hall. There are guests in this room that are just eating away, but as we progress, the darkness within Six devours every single guest as we walk by, making for a very brutal sequence. Sadly, nothing more than what we normally see takes place here. After this, a giant door opens that reveals a way outside, as you can hear seagulls in the distance. 
taking the camera up here shows an abrupt end as Six stops walking and the credits roll. So that concludes the regular playthrough of Little Nightmares, but we're not quite done yet as there's one more area to check out and that's the chapter select screen. So we have the five sections of the game, including the three DLC expansions. Getting closer into the prison shows pretty much what you'd normally see. However, in the lair, I was able to get a peek at the janitor, only to discover that the janitor's arm abruptly ends. At the end of the arm, we can find a small cube though, and what's interesting is that the material for the janitor is assigned to this cube. So you can see the janitor's textures applied uniformly to this cube, when normally these are mapped to the janitor's model itself, like the arm. The kitchen is another one that doesn't really hide anything from normal view, although getting up close and personal with the chef is still quite horrifying. The guest area has two pals just enjoying a meal that we normally don't have a full look at, as the other guests fight for Six. It's the ladies' quarters that I found to be the most interesting though. First off, Six appears to be manipulating fire, as the lighter is non-existent. However, getting a closer look reveals the lady in an endless animation, where she's looking towards Six, then turns back to her left, where she eventually resets. You can see her mask is locked in place, which allows us to get what probably is the best look at her face that we've had. She appears calm here, but what she doesn't realize is that she's already dead. But that wraps up our Out of Bounds journey through Little Nightmares in the guests area and the ladies quarters. Let me know down in the comments if you'd like me to continue this journey into the DLC. I hope you enjoyed this video though, and if you did, consider subscribing. And as always, I'll see all of you in the next video. Cheers!